Okay, so in this video, I'm going to set up a server from scratch so that we can use Laravel Deployer. I normally use Laravel Forge for that purpose. Um, it creates a great encapsulation around all of that. But I don't know, I just thought it would be interesting for us to see that, that cycle by ourselves. So um, first of all, I'm going to create a server. I use DigitalOcean for that. I have an account, so I'm just going to log in. And then I'm going to create a droplet. So we have a couple of options here. Um, I can just use Ubuntu or whatever Linux distributions I want and do everything from scratch. But there are actually some kind of boilerplate we can start from, uh, typically LAMP, um, which uses Nginx and PHP and also MySQL. So I'm just going to click here and then at least we're going to start from something. The only thing to notice is that, I mean, at least at the time of this recording, is that PHP will be version 7.0 and it won't be compatible with the minimum requirements of Laravel. So we're going to have to upgrade that a bit. Um, so just keep that in mind. Then just a cheaper one for the purpose of this demonstration. London will do fine. And no additional options. I actually have already my key registered here, so I'm going to go ahead and select it. If you don't have it on there, just, just add it here um, and give it a custom name. And I'm just gonna go ahead and create it. Okay, so whilst this is uh, creating itself, I'm going to go to the networking session and I'm going to add my domain that I bought on over. So I just went to find a domain, typed that and purchased it. Um, and also I then linked the name servers to DigitalOcean to make sure that DigitalOcean manages my DNS settings. So as a result, I go to the networking session on DigitalOcean and I'm gonna start typing the domain, which is laravel-deployer.com. I'm gonna add it. Okay, so now you can see the name servers have already been placed. So all we need to do is point that host name. So by entering the at alias, and we choose the droplet that we've just created. And I'm going to create it. Okay, so now we have that laravel-deployer.com that points to our server. Okay, so let's set up that server now. Copy the IP address and I'm going to go ahead on my terminal and type ssh root at whatever I've just copied. Um, yes, so now I need to make sure I want this host on my known host. Obviously, I trust it. And I am logged in. Now, a little parenthesis, um, I'm not a big fan of this terminal uh, pattern here, which is called a PS1. Especially if you start going into very complicated directories, like, I don't know, tamp, then this thing, then tamp again. You can see that my comments are like 10% of the screen or whatever. And I don't know, I'm not a big fan of this. So I'm just going to quickly, for the sake also of this presentation, go to the bash RC profile. Um, first of all, I'm going to put some colors. So I'm going to look for the false color option and uncomment it. And then the PS1. The gist here is that uh, slash A slash H, sorry, is the, um, the host. I just generally know which host I'm in. A user I'm going to keep. And W is the working directory, but I would like the deal name of that. So only the, the, the last directory, not the full pass. So I'm going to put W here. I'm going to do the same for the uncolored version. Save that. So you can see that we go from this. And if I reload the bash, we then end up having this. So yes, we lose a bit of information because the temp um, could be anywhere, right? It could be this one, or it could be this one here. Um, but I mean, I generally know which directory I'm in and if I want to know more, just do PWD and that's it. Okay, so that was uh, one little parenthesis. And the second one is that we need to add some locale. Uh, otherwise, we're going to get a bunch of warnings that are going to be a bit annoying during the setup. So I'm just going to go ahead and type some comments to set up the locale. Um, I will make that available as a, as a little checklist. So don't worry about you know, remembering them or anything. 
I find out that reloading the bash is actually not enough for those changes to be effective. So I'm going to exit um, the, the server altogether and reconnect to it. So at this point, we're going to set up the server in order to upgrade PHP 7.0 to PHP 7.2. Um, but in order to do that, we actually have to add uh, PPA, which is some kind of repository for PHP packages. But in order to do that, we need to upgrade all of our dependencies. So that means we need to do an apt-get update with the Y option to always say yes. And we also need to do an apt-get upgrade with the same Y option. And this is going to take a little while to process. So I'm just going to fast forward until the end of all of this. Now that our dependencies are up to date, we can actually go ahead and upgrade PHP to the 7.2 version. So I've just, uh, I'm just going to paste a huge comment here. Um, so the purpose of the first two lines are to add the PHP repository into our dependencies. And then we update those dependencies again. And finally, we installed PHP 7.2 with a bunch of modules and also with Composer. I'm just going to run that again. It's going to take a little while, so I'm going to fast forward. And now PHP should be on version 7.2. Okay. So now that PHP has been upgraded, we actually need to configure our server via Nginx. So at the moment, if we go to our server on any browser, we will see that little message because actually um, DigitalOcean created a, a server on Nginx for us to see that page. Um, so let's configure that. So I'm going to go to the Nginx folder. And we can see that you have here all the sites that are available and the sites that are enabled. Um, and if we go on the sites available, we can see both the default and the DigitalOcean servers that we are going to remove because we're going to start from scratch. So we're going to create a new server on Nginx. I like the name of the server to match the, the server name. It's a convention that Laravel Forge uses and I find quite practical. Instead of creating it all from scratch here, I've got a snippet that I'm just going to quickly go through with you. So Nginx. This is really the important part. We listen to the port 80. Sorry, I've got S here. Yeah, so we're going to listen to the port 80. Um, the server name is laraveldeploy.com. So this is the, the host name that we want this configuration to match. Uh, and when it does match, we will serve on this working directory. So this is not created yet, the, this, this folder, but this is what we want. So we will create a laraveldeploy.com directory. Again, a convention from Laravel Forge that I quite like. And then the slash current directory, because we're going to use zero downtime uh, with Laravel Deployer. And then the slash public, because obviously by default, this is where our index.php file um, is located. Then the rest is um, mostly headers and uh, log configuration, but also obviously the location blocks, which defines how to treat the index.php file. And then the location block that defines fastCGI PHP where we define here which version we want it to be using. So let's save that. We've defined the configurations of laraveldeploy.com, but we haven't enabled it. To enable that configuration to work, we need to go on the sites enabled. And the way this works is that you need a symlink to the configuration file on the sites available. So for example, DigitalOcean had a symlink to its own configuration sites available. Obviously, we've removed that, so the symlink is broken. This is why it's red, so let's remove it. And we'll create our own symlink. And I can see that a symlink has been created. Finally, we need to restart Nginx and PHP FPM. One final thing that we have to configure with our server is our database. So when we connected earlier, actually, I'm going to show you. So I'm going to exit and go back on the server. 
DigitalOcean show us a little message. Um, and the one that is important for MySQL is this one here. They say, we encourage you to run this uh, if you want to change your password. But at the moment, the current password is saved here. So let's show it. OK, so this is the current MySQL password. Um, and then the idea is that you type this thing. So MySQL secure installation. You enter the current MySQL password, which is this one. So I'm just going to paste this here. And then you go through a bunch of questions to set up a new password. I'm just going to skip that for now and use this as default. But obviously, if it's a production server that you're going to use, you might want to follow this setup process. And the last thing with MySQL is to create the actual database. We're going to simply execute a little command, which is create database. And I'm going to call it Laravel. Uh, ask me for the password, which I will copy from here. So at this point, our server is ready to welcome a new Laravel application.